Guys, I want to help you out. I want to reach out to you. And if you don't like that, you can suck. I'm just fucking kidding with you. That's just fucking shit. Alright, welcome to this episode of Reaching Out. I'm Kevin Skull Anderson. You are my loyal subjects. I've got a good one for you today. We're going to be featuring some really, really good artists who deserve to be recognized for the hard work that they put into their artwork. Various kinds of artwork in many cases. We're going to showcase to you four of these points in general, starting with a good friend of mine who's been on DeviantArt for almost a year now, Lauren Elizabeth. Also known by her username, Lauren Reed Elizabeth. She is an up and coming artist, about a decade younger than I am, and she's got her whole life ahead of her, and God bless her, and it shows in her artwork. You know, I gotta tell you something, people. Her artwork is, quite frankly, for someone who's 17 years old, who's an up and comer like her, Probably very, very concrete and very intense, and dare I say it, very well executed as well. Keep in mind, this is the same artist that does traditional art, digital art, photography, and this this person's got it. You know, she's got it. You know. And look at that photograph on the top. You see that on the top? That is a clear sign that you know, and I know, and even she knows, that she herself has got it. When you're able to come up with a photograph of this caliber with such a panorama shot where you can get a clear view of everything in plain hindsight, that's how you know you've made it as a photographer. And might I direct you to a few of the other particular drawings that she made, not to mention the photograph of her kitty at the bottom right corner. Now, starting from the left, her traditional art drawing of a candle, of course, that is perfectly done. I don't see how anyone could could do it as simplistically and as flawlessly for such simplicity as her. I mean, look at that though. The lighting of the candle, the, the surrounding of the candle, and you know, even the letters thank you. All in just, you know, well, they're not letters as much as they are words, but fuck it, you know? Bottom line, this is a great drawing. And I featured this as part of my feature for her because, quite frankly, she's got it. And, you know, even though it didn't take her as much time as it would, say, some of her other traditional artwork or some of her other digital artwork or whatever, the bottom line is simple. When you're 17 years old and you can crank out art that is quite literally that good, that's how you know you've made it. Also, she did some fan art from Inside Out, which features a character named Anger, which I think she captured perfectly. In fact, I know she captured it perfectly because it shows in her artwork. Take a look at this, though, seriously. Look at that. The expression on that dude's face, combined with the fire that resembles his hair, supposedly. Let me tell you. Disney needs to hire this woman. She's got it. If, if ever they need a storyboarder, she would be it. Without question. I mean, I'd, I'd hire her, personally. Not, not that it mattered for now. Well, hell, I mean, I just went too 
disregard it. Okay, let's just disregard that. The point is, her fan art of anger is just really, really top of line. I like this very much. And she even did some work from her other catalog regarding her disco her, her deviant art artography or whatever. You know, this one character that she did called Lily Storm, I think this is pretty well drawn too. I mean, it's got such elegance to it, such class. You know, you can't, you can't ask for much more than that. You can't. How can you? It's impossible. I mean, you can't ask for more than that. Come on, man. Give me a break. You can't. I mean, you're either born with it or you're not. And she was born with it. And by the way, she came up with another particular digital art kind of work in her. Deviant Art Gallery on the bottom center, you know, on, on the center right, right there, right there, right there, right above my arrow, just above my arrow, right, now, she drew two characters, they're both drawn quite impressively, pretty well executed, I should say, and it's astonishing to me that she could be able to make a background supposedly from a photograph and then use that as the background of her two characters that she clearly drew almost to perfection you know and then we have that picture on the bottom right of her cat which I believe may be a photographed realization of I believe the drawing that she drew in her sketchbook, I don't know if that's the same cat as the cat in the drawing, but still, I mean, it's worth pointing out, and, and the cat sleeping is just absolutely adorable, I love it, man, this is great, so, Lauren, you got your whole life ahead of you, and though everything is tough, and it's only going to get tougher, Keep trudging, man, because you've totally got it. Just keep cranking out new artwork. Continue to improve upon your style. You can never go wrong. Trust me. You've got it. You go, girl! And now we got another one. We got another one. And, and you know what's crazy about it? What's crazy to me... You know, here's another artist who would otherwise be very, very well-crafted in her style, specifically, and, and I'm going to tell you why, I'm going to tell you why, Twirly Bird Joyce, Twirly Bird Joyce, man, yeah, that's her, that's her username, Twirly Bird, her real first name, of course, is Joyce, I mean, not, not that it's worth pointing out, but I just like to point it out, just for the sake of pointing it out, for these reasons, you know, obviously, hey, I was right, she is a female, I didn't confuse the gender this time, thank God, okay, now, she has a more tra she has a more digital art style apparently and it and it shows here but of course her art style digitally is quite varied as she dabbles in fan art she dabbles in 3D art of some kind and and the shading that she puts into her artwork after she lines and colors it it's crazy man to think that this woman named Joyce, who could come up with such effortlessly masterful master classes of artwork, put to canvas, you know, I can't even describe how, how crazy this is. Because you think the track, the background for this one picture on on the top left, for instance, she was able to draw that quite well. I tell you, you, you can't come up with a better background than that unless you put your heart and soul into it, which is precisely what Twirly Bird here did. And let me tell you, I'm going to be straight up, the character she drew is freaking fantastic in terms of how it's executed, how it's shaded, how it's colored, everything. You know... 
I can't even begin to describe the sheer genius of that. Now, as far as the one on the bottom left, that one, on the other hand, that was done, I believe, in 3D. And I, I really like how these characters are drawn. They're, they're done in a Pokemon kind of style, like, like a Pokemon kind of style. Pokemon. But Pokemon, you know, that has been a long-running show since 1996, if I recall. And it's in its 22nd or 23rd season already, even though it clearly became a dead horse a long time before. Because by that point, most of Pokemon's original fan base had grown completely out of it and actually got a life. Which is completely understandable, because when you've watched the show evolve for so long, and you want to look for variety in a show, but not too much to where it just doesn't become real anymore, then that's understandable. But the characters that she drew, I don't know if some of these are original characters or if they're not. With their muppets, like I mean, the one on the on the on the left edge of that picture. If I'm not mistaken, that looks more like a muppet than than a Pokemon. But who am I to judge? Meanwhile, she drew a picture of, of your your typical school geek. Was what she drew on the top right corner over there that you're looking at right now. That has a lot of value to it, and and I don't just say this to say it either, I actually am serious about it. The way that she drew this, the way that she carried it out, the way that she outlined this and shaded this and cross-hashed it digitally, you know, it, it reminds you of something that comes straight out of Disney or Pixar's repertoire. Or, as much as I like to shit on them, Sony Pictures Animation. Except she puts them all to shame, and it just shows, you know? I mean, her username is Twirly Bird, but she puts the bird to shame. Because everything she does is with grace, with style, with dignity, with a special kind of originality that you just don't see in most Hollywood studios anymore. And meanwhile, the three pictures on the bottom right corner, specifically the one that she drew traditionally with a green background to it and green outlining more specifically, of course, the, the one on the nearest to the corner of the bottom of the picture, of course, that, despite being a series of sketches, it's just so well done that you cannot even hate on this in any way because it's that good. Meanwhile, another picture she drew of Pearl from Steven Universe. You know, Steven Universe, right? Crystal Gems, Rebecca Sugar, Cartoon Network. Those three are synonymous with the show and its character, which she drew. And might I add, this has a absolutely expertly made background and an expertly made drawing to boot of Pearl from Steven Universe. And let me tell you, this... I can't even begin to imagine the time that she puts into her work, because it's an awful lot of time. And, and the last one on the upper right bottom corner, on the... On the rightmost bottom corner specifically, I should say, because why did why I come up with upper right? Because I was referring to the, to the stereotypical schoolgirl on the top instead of the, the one on the bottom, obviously. But she looks to be some sort of a, of a star versus the force of evil kind of character, except she's done expertly, she's done expertly this series justice and in a way, she's drawn a picture of this character, which is inspired by the show and quite a few others in quite a few different ways. And for whatever reason, the dark and gloomy background of the freezing moon and, and the mayhem-like... The reason why I say mayhem is because they're one of my favorite black metal bands. 
but the mayhem-esque background just fits so well with the character that she drew, so it just fits. It fits like a freaking glove. Moving on to another such character of which I have come to pretty much just adore on her affinity because this, this person's artwork has a lot of freaking quality to it, the likes of which no man may ever truly understand. And, and maybe people aren't meant to understand it. I don't know if it's just what, you know? But let me tell you something. Dragon Sushi has that special quality that you cannot find in most artists of the furry calendar. Did I say calendar? I meant to say calendar. Forgive me. But, but, Dragon Sushi does, of course, what, what many fur, what many fur affinity artists do, they, they draw fetish art, but the art that's not fetish art, specifically the ones that are safe for work, or SFW as they would call it, these are drawn with such precision, such absolute certainty and confidence, that you can't help but give a huge round of kudos to this person for having come up with these drawings in the first place. And meanwhile, the 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 complexity of some of these drawings is just so it's it's confusing to me. And yet he's able to pull this off without a problem. Of course, I'm just assuming that Dragon Sushi's a he. I don't know if it's a he or a her, but. You know. But Dragon Sushi has that special quality, especially on the top right pictures and the bottom right pictures and all the other pictures you see here. And yet, at the same time, these drawings have such... I'm not sure what to call it at this point, but I'm just going to take a shot in the dark and say bravado. These pictures have such anatomical bravado that they require a special kind of understanding in order for an up and comer or an artist of even my caliber who does all sorts of art from all sorts of genres, no matter which one it is, to be able to learn how to draw even half as good as this person. Because cause Dragon Sushi's got it. There's, there's no question about that. Dragon Sushi has got it. It's especially with the bride on the top center, just about. And another one on the top center, which depicts her character, which supposedly is like a priest, you know, a priest of some kind. Of course, he resembles a wolf, but that's just a mere dead giveaway at this point. But this wolf is basically a priest, I would say. Not, not that it has to do with anything with, with the character itself and the way that it's drawn, but... This character has a special quality to it. This quality has a lot of potential. All the potential in the world, I would say. And then you've got the drawing on the bottom top right. Bottom top right. What the hell? Anyway, the bottom on the... the I give up. Fucking shit. The top right picture features two women two women specifically, looking at the sky with lightning falling down like nobody else has missed this. It appears as though the both are superheroes who wish to fight crime, kind of like, like the Powerpuff Girls, you know, maybe a manga-inspired Unikitty in some way, I don't know. But just being real with you, and without any regrets whatsoever, these two are just smoking hot. But 
how can they not be? They're just drawn that way, kind of like Jessica Rabbit, right? Because she, Jessica Rabbit isn't bad, she's just drawn that way. Kind of like the two in this picture, with, with the lightning coming down from the clouds, right? So yeah, I mean, that sums it up, doesn't it? Alright, last featured artist of the day is time for the main event of the evening! Suzarte. The man, the myth, the legend. I mean, how the hell do you come up with art this grotesque and at the same time so relatable in every which way imaginable? I mean, this guy, what the fuck is this guy doing? This guy's a fucking nutcase. I love this guy. This artwork is freaking fantastic. Oh my god. Es especially with the way he drew Mickey as some sort of a humanized figure. Of course, he took his, his Mickey Mouse hat off. Because we already know, because we know now after 90 years, that Mickey Mouse's mouse ears are just a part of a hat that he wears, a part of his toupee, to make him look more like, say, Mentally Mitch when he has a Mickey Mouse inspired haircut, or a hairdo of some kind. Go check that guy out, he's hilarious as hell. <laughs> Good man, oh my god. Goodness. You talk about Getting down to the nitty gritty of it all, Cesarte is one of the premier definitive examples of such unbelievable madness set to picture and drawing. Oh my god, this guy, can you believe this guy? Look look at look at the masterpieces that he's made here. This guy is fucking savage! And and especially these characters on a on a motorcycle fighting crime together. Well not not necessarily policemen as much as they are Hell's Angels. Or I guess we could just call them Heaven's Angels, since that's what they are. And and the and Oh my god, the picture with, with this guy sitting on a chair, wearing a pair of shorts and a shirt, the guy appears to be in his mid-sixties. I don't know if he's actually that or if he is actually in his forties, but this guy is just drawn to the teeth, like a fucking boss. This guy is, this guy is lab. This guy is freaking lit. And by lab, I mean like a boss. Yeah, I swear, man. This, and especially with with the drawing that he made on the top center, especially with the way that it was drawn so expertly, so expertly with such absolute certainty. And and by the way, despite the fact that I'm able to speak so fluently with my English. I have been known to slur my speech despite being an altist on the lower end of the Asperger's totem pole, which I believe I mentioned this quite before. In fact, numerous times throughout my YouTube career. But good God in heaven if there was one, and I know that there is. You cannot tell me different. There is a God in heaven. You can't tell me there is no God. Because this guy's artwork is freaking genius! <laughs> Look at this fucking... Oh! This guy does illustrations, he's done concept art, he does storyboards, comics, digital art, characters. 
you name it, if it's digital art, he does it. And he does it to a T. He has a Patreon. He has a Ko-Fi account. He has an Instagram. He has a Twitter. He has a Tumblr. He has a PayPal for which you can pay him through his Patreon. And who wouldn't pay this guy? I don't know of a single person who wouldn't pay this guy to keep doing art like this. Because he obviously does it professionally. It says so on his freaking bio. He's a professional digital artist. Because that's what he gets paid to do. And rightfully so. Because this guy is absolutely brutal at what he does. This guy is legit. Holy shit. And that's going to do it for this episode of Talking... No, actually, it's not talking to myself news, although it could be, if you, if you allow yourself to get that impression, but I'm not going to let you get that impression, because this is reaching out to the unfamous, and with that, I've been Kevin the Skull Anderson, you've been my loyal viewers and watchers and subbers, if you like what you see, please, for the love of God, feel free to subscribe anytime you wish. Or feature my YouTube and my DeviantArt and my Twitter and my Tumblr and my Facebook and all my other social media accounts. I have like 14 of them, if I recall. Maybe 15. If I don't have a 15th one, I may make one sometime this year. But if you like my stuff, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Don't hesitate to share my artwork as I share yours. And if ever I come across your artwork, and I take stock in it, and you want me to feature your artwork on a future episode of Reaching Out to the Unfamous, all you have to do is note me, Gmail, DeviantArt, Twitter, I'm all over the map, man. Well, well not literally, but I'm all over the mainstream map. Uh, Reaching Out to the Unfamous is brought to you by the Nitwit Fuckhead League and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, which is paid in part by Shimpin Not that it means anything. And they both would like to remind you that... Out of further review, review, my Nash just got a text on Kaepernick's case, and they retexted me with a message that reads, Oh, I'm just a Kaepernick and a girl for not letting him express Obama like beliefs. LOL, must be a Democrat thing. In other words, the touchdown is not good. It is bullshit. Ah, son of a bitch. Then again, you already knew that. Fuck you and good night.